What's going on everybody, Bows Phoenix here, and today we are going to be taking an unscripted look at our friend here, the Kensei. This is going to be kind of like the Berserker video I did where we kind of took a look at his moveset, some of the options you have in combat, and uh, to showcase all this stuff in an actual like multiplayer combat setting, I'm going to be doing a match analysis with Kensei later on this week. So be on the lookout for that. When I get that up, I'll link a card to it so you guys can go ahead and go from this video to that one. But as for right now, I just wanted to show you some of the options you have against Isaac the Peacekeeper bot here since he's been changed a little bit in the patch. Now, uh, previously before, uh, and then this is still the case, a lot of your mind games are going to come from your top unblockable. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We'll also cover gear setup and cosmetics and all that fun stuff, but... I really just wanted to get started here with some uh, some quick tips for you guys to start playing this character. Maybe a little differently if you're a little confused on how he works now. But for those of you that are new to the class, and maybe you just want to try him out, see what his buffs are like, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So first, like I was saying, your mind games are going to come from your top unblockable. Now what does that mean? So, in the Kinsei repertoire, at the end of a chain, any chain finisher can be topped off by doing a top heavy attack, which makes it unblockable. So you can just do three top heavies like this. You can do, I think he has a light, light heavy. Yeah, so light, light heavy like that. So you got all those options. Now, what you can do, because this is probably one of the most telegraphed attacks in the entire game. It's super easy to parry. Uh, you'll almost never land it unless you get a wall splat on someone, which in, in that case, go for it. But before the patch, you had to get three hits in. So that means you had to either get a guard break, a throw, and then do it. You had to get lucky and somehow like maybe start an attack like all the way back here. Like you'll start an attack way far away from your opponent and maybe you don't hit them. And oh, hey, look, a top heavy unblockable. All right, sweet, yay. But. Since the patch, there's now a couple different easier ways to get this top heavy unblockable. So you can do a sidestep strike. Oops, if I could actually play the character here. Um, there we go. So a sidestep strike can go straight into a top heavy unblockable now like this, or a helm splitter can as well. So you can do that. You can get a top uh, a helm splitter and then go straight into the top heavy unblockable. Now, like I said, this is one of the most telegraphed attacks in the game. You almost never want to actually throw it out. I mean, sometimes you can just to really screw with your opponent. And, like I said, you can pretty much only get it if you're uh, gonna get a wall splat. So let's see if we get this here. Oh! My throw distance is too short. Uh, let's go ahead and try this again. So you'll land that, they can't do anything about that. If you throw them up against a wall, that's a free, top-heavy, unblockable finisher. So, yay. Good deal for that. So, what can we do with the top-heavy unblockable? Well, you can cancel it into a couple of different things. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So, let's go ahead and just get a helm splitter and say we're gonna go into our top-heavy unblockable. The first thing I wanna do this is my bread and butter. This is what I'll usually try to throw to an opponent is the the dash cancel into guard break. Now this is really cool and a lot of people don't expect this and I've played against a lot of Kenseis that don't know how to do this and they've asked me about it. So I'm going to show you guys here today how to do this. So you do the top heavy unblockable, so you do your helm splitter. And then without pressing B, without pressing the faint button, you don't have to... Um, you don't have to cancel it with a feint. All you do is dash forward with your dash button. So on, on Xbox controller, which is what I use, I play on PC by the way, but Xbox controller, you just press A to dash forward, or if you're on PlayStation, that would be X, I guess. And then, so A and then the guard break button. So dash and then guard break. So you get a dash guard break out of that. So why this works, so I'll show it to you again. Why this works really well is people always try to either, uh, they'll try to parry that top heavy unblockable, so they'll start like a heavy attack or something. And if they start that heavy attack, you can dash in and get that, that guard break on them because they're in the middle of an attack animation. And then you can kind of vortex a little bit. So you have a couple of different options. So it's not really a vortex, but it kind of is. So what you can do if you land that guard break. So let's say you land that guard break. What are your options then? Well, there's a couple different things. You still have the uh, the side heavy cancel, the uninterruptible side heavy cancel. So you can do that. All right. So let's pretend that we get a guard break, right? So dash cancel, and then we side heavy, and then we do that again, and then we get that. So you can do that, or you can faint it. So Shit, hold on. Meep. So, but that takes all your stamina for just two heavy hits. 
you use your entire uh, you use your entire stamina bar for two hits. But unfortunately, I mean that's that's Kensei's mind games, man. Like it's he's in the faint he's in the faint zone. Like that's what you're supposed to be doing with him. So if you land a couple hits too, I mean that's a good idea to uh, throw out a feint so you get like the, the two lights in and then you go to throw a heavy and you feint that into a guard break. I mean, it's kind of the same stuff that you can do with pretty much any character, feint heavies into guard break, but at least he's got the unblockable and that makes it a little bit better. People still block this side heavy uninterruptible all the time or they'll parry it if they got the timing down. Uh, assassins will try to dodge away from it, but it has really good tracking and it'll get them. It's all about just figuring out like what is the best option for each scenario you're in? Because Kensei kind of has some options now, which is really nice. Uh, another thing you can do after the uh, the top heavy unblockable, so let's say we get one here real quick, is you can dash out of that into another Helm Splitter and keep going. So Helm Splitter, Helm Splitter, and then you know you can just do whatever, or you can throw a heavy and get him to throw out a, a heavy attack and then parry it and then guard break them that way. So. And then, you know, you just keep going like that. Eventually, they will get the timing down for the Helm Splitter and start parrying you. So I wouldn't throw that attack out too much. I would try to mix it up a little bit. So what I like to do is uh, I'll do the first one. Guard break him. Side heavy. And then maybe throw that out. I don't know. It just depends on the situation you're in. But Kensei has a lot of options right now. It's, it's really cool to see him. You're not going to see him in any tournaments or anything. Because he still doesn't really have any way to open up turtles against really good turtles. I mean, he's just one of those characters where you don't really have anything because uh, his attacks are parryable, you know? He doesn't have anything that you have to react to. It's all, like, Helm Splitter is really fast and his top light is still really fast. His side lights are a lot faster now. Uh, they've had 200 milliseconds shaved off of them. There's still 700 milliseconds to get one in, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that's just the that's just the, the way the character rolls. He's still got a really useless zone attack that you can cancel into a guard break, but nobody really falls for that at high level. I mean, that's kind of one of the oldest tricks in the book. People don't really fall for that too often. You might get some people with it, but I, I really don't recommend doing that. It's It takes up your pretty much your whole stamina bar just to get a heavy attack in, if you even do land it. Uh, worst case scenario, they just tech the guard break, and then you're out half of, like, three quarters of bar of stamina, so... Be careful with that, but a lot of your strategy is going to be revolving around waiting for them to make a mistake. You do the side strike, and then you you know you start going into your mind games here. But the biggest uh, the biggest thing in your arsenal here is that top heavy unblockable. Getting that in, landing a helm splitter where you can, getting your guard breaks, and then going into your mix ups from that. But uh, other than that, if they're playing super aggro, you want to make sure that you, uh, you're you getting those parries in because guard breaks are where a lot of your damage is going to come from. And uh, that's really important. So, yeah, guys, like I said, he's still got a really hard time breaking open turtles. Uh, it's really frustrating as a Kensei player. Uh, the only thing he's got is that top heavy unblockable, which is really good, but you have to do attacks to get to it, which really sucks. So uh, if he was able to just initiate that, it might be a little better because it would force them to either dodge or attack or, you know, because you can't block an unblockable, you've got to parry it or dodge out of the way. And if they dodge, you can get a guard break, but if they parry, you can cancel it and, uh, you know, parry them instead when they throw their heavy attack. But unfortunately, you got to get that helm splitter in or that sidestep strike, and those are both really telegraphed. And, uh, you know, one's a little faster, but, I mean, people can still see it coming and they can still get the timing down and parry you, but... Uh, that's kind of where Kensei is right now. He's a little better. He's a lot more fun to play than he was and uh, People are having a little bit of issues with him if you play him smart and your your mind games are on point But uh, like I said, you're not gonna be seeing him any tournaments So that being said, that's that I'll show you guys some more stuff in a match analysis where I actually fight real people instead of the bot Let's jump over real quick and take a look at my gear setup and uh, some of my cosmetics because I know some of you guys are interested in that sort of stuff so Let's jump over. All right, here we are at the customization screen. I got my Kensei here. Let's go ahead and see what I've got going on. For outfit, uh, pretty much what I'm using here is just the new Elite one. It gives you this sweet looking Oni demon horn helmet thing with the hair. I like this one a lot. And then you get that paint job, the Death Blossoms paint job, which is really cool. I've only just changed the colors up a little bit. I'm using Fujiwara for neutral. I'm using Burning for attacker, which looks really cool. And then my favorite one is probably Vineyard. For material color, I'm using black, and that's on everything. Uh, let's see. I'm using the Scales of Spring for the chest, which is in that Death Blossoms pack. No engravings, and then the symbol just comes from the Death Blossoms pack. You also get this Oni Blossoms one that looks pretty cool, too. It's like a dragon or whatever. Uh, shoulder is just the Scales of Summer, 
and then uh, Skull Blossom, and then right shoulder is pretty much the same thing. So there you go there. Uh, let's see here. Standards, I'm actually using the Scales of Spring with the Oni Blossom. So that's pretty cool. I got those dragons on there. It looks pretty sweet. They're kind of washed out. It's kind of hard to see them with this armor set because of those spikes, but I still think it looks really cool. Uh, for the back, I'm using Scales of Spring and Oni Blossom. Looks really neat there. He's got that cool little rope dealy, which is pretty neat looking. Ornament is just the spiked horns, which is what you get from the Death Blossoms, like I was telling you. And then I am a male Kensei, so the female one looks pretty cool too. But I kind of like the male one a little better. He's a little, like, bulkier, and I think the armor looks better on him. Female's just kind of too thin, and I don't really like the way it looks. Uh, for weapon, for, like, gear, like, cosmetic looks, these are not the original pieces of gear by any stretch. I've changed them so many times. I'm using the Airi set, which is the spiky-looking one. It's got this red face mask. It's kind of cool-looking. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. The Ginke one kind of looks like this, but it's gray, and it's got spikes. So you can use that one if you like the spiky look better. Uh, Ayuri chest, Ayuri shoulders, which took me forever to get, man. These things take a really long time to drop for some reason. Sometimes it's always the shoulders and I'm looking forward to complete a set. For the sword, though, I'm using the Inigaki set. Probably am pronouncing this wrong and all you weebs are getting super triggered, but that's okay. I'm an American. I'm allowed to be ignorant. Uh, Inigaki set's really cool. I just like how clean it looks. I like the little engraving on the blade and the blood groove, and then you got that cool little pattern on the actual sharp part of the blade. Uh, the, I have all the Murasama stuff, which is like the unique thing or whatever, but it, it's always, it's so red, it doesn't look good if you're attacker, or if you're the, uh, defender, because all your stuff is gonna be blue. Uh, so I just like how clean and neutral this looks. It's one of my go-to set pieces. Uh, the Kimura also looks really cool, and I'm trying to actually get the full Sasaki set, because it looks neat with this handle, but, uh, that's what I'm going with right now. Really like the look of that one. As for stats, the most important part, um... I'm running debuff resistance and exhaustion recovery because Kensei uses a lot of stamina, especially if you're fainting a bunch. So if you get parried and end up blowing out your stamina, you're going to recover quickly in a 4v4 mode. For the chest, I've got execution health regen because a lot of your combos end in a heavy, which is or a lot of your, you know, your, you're going to be getting that side heavy from a guard break and that gives you an execution a lot. So recovering that health is really nice. Sprint speed is great. I don't run block damage right now because there's not a whole lot of chip damage in the game in the, you know, the current, you know, setup, so block damage is kind of useless, it only gives you, like, three points of, uh, block damage resistance, or two points, or something like that, something ridiculous, somebody did the math on it, and it's kind of crazy, but, um, block damage resistance and stamina regen, I actually want to change that block damage resistance to revive speed, but I haven't really been actively looking for a revive speed, and I don't feel like leveling up any more gear, so stamina regen and block damage resistance is kind of where it's at for the arms, like I said, though, Revive Speed is probably more useful in 4v4 settings. For the weapon stuff, I have on the blade, I have Full Attack and Defense, and then lowest is Stamina Cost Reduction. I've seen a lot of people running Defense and Stamina Cost Reduction, and then Low Attack, because Kensei does a lot of damage. So I'd be interested to try that out and see how it works. If any of you are running that, let me know how it's working out for you. I'd, like, I'd be interested in checking that out, but you know, you can swap that around any way you want. Uh, for the hilt, I've got uh, revenge mode defense and revenge gain by defense. Revenge isn't as useful as it was for the patch, but it's still super helpful. You get an auto parry, infinite stamina, uh, you know, all that cool stuff, and then you get a little bit of attack or, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep using this. I might go for feet cooldown reduction because Kensei has some pretty spectacular feats, and uh, they're not all passives, which is really nice, so I might check that out. For the guard, I've got revenge mode attack, of course, at the highest, and then revenge gain by injury, which works a little differently now. If you guys haven't seen the patch video, seeing how all this stuff works now, I highly recommend you check that out. For feats, Kensei is the only character I play where, depending on the game mode I'm playing, my feats change. This is kind of my elimination setup, so if I'm playing elims, 4v4 elims, I'm going for fast recovery, which gives me that stamina. I've got chilling stare, which is a debuff for enemies that give them lower attack and defense. Longbow is great if you're in like a 2v1 and you just want to finish someone off or if you just want to get a cheap kill on somebody. I hate using it, but if you don't use it, other people are going to use it on you and it really sucks. Unblockable is just a great all-around skill. It throws people for a loop and they absolutely have to parry you. So all of your attacks are unblockable. Lights, heavies, whatever. Everything you do is unblockable for a short duration. That's super useful for throwing people off and putting a lot of pressure on, especially in a 2v1 scenario or, you know, a gank situation. For Domin or Dominion, I usually have body count on because this makes you a monster on B point, 
when you're killing minions, every time you kill a soldier, you get health and stamina. This is really nice if you're getting ganked on B, and you just do a zone attack and kill a bunch of minions, it'll recover a ton of health. So, highly recommend that one. I still use Chilling Stare. Smoke Bomb is okay. It's a good alternative if you want to use that to kind of get out of gank situations and catch, a, catch your breath real quick. For uh, Second Wind is really great. I mean, it's either a toss-up between Longbow or Second Wind. It depends. Second Wind is great. You get four uses out of it. recovers a good chunk of your health. This is good if you're fighting a turtle or something, or if you're in a gank situation and you're just trying to build revenge and they keep feeding it to you. Second Wind is going to give you a lot of survivability. So Steadfast is okay. I don't really use this too much. It just grants immunity from throw attempts for a little bit. Don't really use this one that much. I don't know anybody that really does either. Uh, and then you also have Arrow Storm and Stellwart Banner. So all of his tier 4 feats are really good. It just depends on what you want to use. Arrow, St Arrow Storm is the one that just shoots a bunch of arrows and they come down in, in waves staggered. Stellwart Banner is really cool for like if you're trying to stay alive on a point and you're the last one alive and you're just trying to cap it to maybe rally your team. This You put this down and then everybody in it gains a bunch of health. So, But this is just my, my typical uh, all around setup. I might change some of these around here and there, but you can use whatever you really want whatever works for you. But that's pretty much it, guys. That is my unscripted Kensei guide. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, don't forget to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss any new content. There's a lot of news coming up this week. We've got rumors of a Orochi and Raider or buff or change or something is going to happen to them. And hopefully we'll learn more about this uh, that this week. So make sure you subscribe so you catch that video as soon as it comes out. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, if you're new here, get subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you at the next video.